Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the shed. I am Lonnie. Hey, good morning. I'm Candace. Welcome back. Hey, Candace. Hey, Lonnie. Did you hear about the semicolon that broke the law? No. It was handed two consecutive sentences. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> hey, Candace. Hey, Lonnie. Did you hear about the guy who stole the calendar? No. He got 12 months. <laughs> That was a good one. That was, that's, good. that's the very essence of the dad joke right yeah. there. Good, good that's joke. Good. <laughs> uh, good morning, everyone. It is garbage day. It's Wednesday morning. It's garbage day for us. It might not be for you, so don't put it out. Yeah, I was wrong yesterday. Well, yes, I put it out last night and it gets picked up today, so you were kind of right. Yeah, I guess so. But more importantly, it's no more dime day. Yes, no more fees for scheduled listings. We can keep our dimes. Yeah. So if you look here, Candace already checked, but I'll show y'all. Schedule your listing. And you do the little slider thing. No and, fee. And we'll say like uh, 3 p.m. today. It doesn't say anything about a fee. And scroll down, no fee at the bottom. Scroll down, look, listed for free. What a deal. That's a good deal. I mean, they went up by 0.35 on the final value fee, <laughs> but that dime you're saving does like if we schedule every listing, like let's say let's say we have a good listing day or something and we 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 list like 40 things, we would the more we list the more we save. So the more times we use scheduled listings, we get a dime. We're basically paying ourselves a dime every like time. They're paying us to sell on eBay. Exactly. <laughs> exactly the logic I used for that. Isn't that perfect logic? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you up to this morning? I've been listing cookbooks. I got two pamphlet style, those Crisco ones listed. These are both from Junior League of uh, Memphis. Look at these graphics, how cool. They're so that, they are that is so the psych that's psychedelic there, oh, right? Yeah. They're both were written in the seventies, obviously. Aren't they cool? They really are. That especially that one. Yeah. Like that just says it all. I know. Right. So I'm gonna lot these up because they're worth less than like ten dollars each. So I'm a lot. So where you could do like two for fifteen or something like that. Twenty. Two for twenty. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. I think it'll sell because they're they're getting pretty much just one shipping rate. It's right to you know that's the magic of the lot especially when you're rates. when you're talking media rate right. like you say right so that's yeah cookbooks are great for that because yeah. you can make lots or sell individually or or yeah. whatever yeah. of course we have a special advantage because we actually have really a bunch of really good cookbooks around here and not saying other places don't because i know y'all do but. yeah we picked up some really good ones over the weekend i've been listening to those since yesterday but don't don't tell anybody, okay? okay? Don't tell anybody. It's a secret. No, I'm telling, talking to them. Don't oh. you tell anybody. <laughs> keep, it's keep, too late. <laughs> keep it quiet. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, am I packing something today? You are. As a matter of fact, let's stay on that topic there. And today, you get to pack a cookbook. Okay. Or two. Are you excited about that? I am. Okay. Let's go ahead and pull some orders though, and then uh, that you can pack your thingamajig. All right, we got like, uh, I don't know, 50, I think 15, 16 orders this morning. Mm -hmm. Let's go. What All we got? Right, first is a pocket shrine. Okay. Pocket 99. 99. Speaking of 99, when that balloon was in the air the other day, we... Uh, we heard that, that song on the radio. That Chinese balloon. Mm -hmm. Alleged Chinese spy balloon or weather balloon or whatever they're going to say it is. Uh, we get in the truck to go somewhere and they're playing that uh, 99 left balloons or whatever that yeah. Nina by, by, by Nina. Yeah, they're playing. They were playing the uh, English version though. They were. They German were. version way better. They usually play the English version. Do they? Yeah. I like the German version even yeah. though I don't know what the hell they're saying. I still <laughs> like it better. It sounds better to me. I tell Lonnie it's weird that like the English version flows like it was written in English. It all rhymes. They may have changed they may have changed the translation to make it work like that. That's I don't what know. I'm thinking cuz what are the odds, you know? And I don't think that girl even spoke English. Oh really? Could you imagine trying to sing in another language? No. Wow. I don't think she did. I'll have to look that up. Yeah. Anyway, pocket 99. Here's Here it is. Pocket Shrine, pocket 99, 1874. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You sound like you're hawking pocket shrines on the corner or something. Pocket Shrine, come get your pocket shrine. 1874. <laughs> 
All right, we have a pop on 5B. It's the punks leader. The what? Punks. The punks leader? <laughs> What's a punks leader? <laughs> Five Bravo punks leader. Okay, let me go find it. Punks leader. Oh, it is. Oh, it's a punks leader. I thought you were saying punks leader. <laughs> Wait, are you, you going to make it? Oh, this is that movie you like so much. I've, I've never seen that movie. Oh. No, I'm thinking of some other movie then. Yeah, I don't know. That's a movie from like the 70s the... or something. The... Oh. Or maybe the 80s. I don't know. Anyway, that's all for $9.99. There's some other movie you like that is, has a title kind of like that. I can't remember. Mm. All right. How much does it sell for? $9.99. Okay. For Frank hat. What kind of hat? Exxon Mobile Nike hat. I started going back there. I'm like, wait, I better find out which hat. It's more than one hat. All right, this is a hat. This is it right here. Very nice hat, actually. Did we get this from Beverly? No, we picked that up at a um, garage sale over the weekend or Friday. Okay. Uh, $19.99 for that. All right. One Delta Kusa's cat, the Cabbage Patch cat. Oh, yeah. One Delta. Oh. This guy? Yep. Okay. $9.99. Remember, that's the one, um, the, uh, the one that's a bolo in this series of these Cabbage Patch animal things has a big patch it's a, like a dog with a patch on his eye like a, you know not like a literal patch but you and know. it's worth like oh i forgot it's, it was good money there I okay how much. Yeah. all right uh we sold a cookbook on three bravo don's uh secrets cookbook three bravo mm -hmm. we have two of those uh, this is the one that had a little bit faded cover our uh I can hear birds chirping out there. That's different. Let's see. Gotta find this cookbook. Right, it's a smaller, one. smaller one, she says. I guess I need to start right no, it's fine. I'm just. Oh, I see it. Okay, here we go. Don Secrets. 1999. Yeah, this is the second one we've sold of Don Secrets. Yep. And we have another one. We have another one listed. Another one stocked right now. All right, we have two albums on one order. Pet Shop Boys and OMD. Pet Shop Boys. Okay, I know which ones they are. I actually have put all the records in here because I wanted to store them somewhere. So all the ones up front here I have not listed yet, which is most of them in this box. So then the other ones back here. I listed yesterday. Just need to find your rhythmics. I didn't list that many. Here we go. Okay, one of them is Pet Shop Boys. And this was a uh, case back in the day. That was kind of rare, right? For people to have 12 inch singles. I never even heard of that. I never, I never did either. So I think maybe it was just a DJ thing. I don't know. I don't know either. Because I mean, so they wouldn't have to try to get right to the song. I don't, yeah. Yeah, because this is like, like these are both remixes. And a lot of the other ones are too. OMD has like a green stuff on the cover. OMD, Candace just told me OMD has a green something on the cover. Yeah, I think I'll be able to recognize it. It's called. That's. Yeah. This might. No, Red Lorry. Okay, I'll pick y'all back up. I found it. It's his last, last album in the box, Dazzle Ships by OMD Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark. And the Pet Shop Boys is what have I done to deserve this? Yeah. What have I? What have I? What have I? You got to do. You gotta do the female part that comes in. I was setting you up. You missed it. I'm not singing on our channel. Everybody will click out. 
Click no, they out. won't. <laughs> Look, I've been I've seen you on here every now and then. You're still a better here. voice than me. Oh yeah, right. Oh man, they would love to have heard my. Um, we did like well, okay when we did resell our rally. When was that? Two years ago now? Yeah, that was the one in um, Cincinnati. Yeah, we went to this place called Tokyo Kitty. Yeah, a little Japanese <laughs> karaoke bar where you get a private room. Yeah, a private room. <laughs> and, uh, okay, well, let me let me see if I can get this right. It was me, you, Justin, Gabby, Ryan, That's and it. Kevin. Oh, and Kevin, yeah. Kevin was there, too. Yeah, oh, yeah. And, uh, and for those of y'all that watch YouTube channels, Kevin is Tennessee Picker. Uh, Justin was RVA flips. Ryan is thrift mine on YouTube, and we were in there for what two, three hours. Yeah. And man, it was rough in there. It was. <laughs> whew, we we had fun though. Yeah, it was fun. There there are some video clips out there that I never want to circulate publicly. No. <laughs> All right, in the bolo drawer we have a loose pop Draculaura. All right. Thirty dollars for that little loose pop. Okay, that came from... That came from Bev. Bev, bye. In his last pick. Three Bravo uh, cookbook. It's okay. gold colored. 100th Centennial. Three Bravo, 100th Centennial. Hey, you have more room for more cookbooks now. Centennial? Yeah. Okay, wait, that's gonna be with this one. 100 Centennial Cuisine? Yeah. Okay. That's from the First Baptist Church in Baton Rouge. How much did it sell for? $14.99. Awesome. Six. Frank. Uh huh. It's Foxtrot. <laughs> Foxtrot. You can say Frank, though. that's fine. I, don't, I can't even remember Foxtrot. You don't have to. A lot of two pops, itchy and scratchy. Oh. From The Simpson. You didn't have to say from The Simpsons. I know that much, at least. Some people may not, though. That's true. That's true. My pop culture knowledge, for as much pop culture as we sell, my pop cult culture knowledge is a little lacking. $30 for the pair. Alrighty. Ooh, that's pretty good. Walmart pin, 196 196 Should be in this bucket right here. Bittenville Home Office pen. Oh, I saw it. Yeah, I saw it sold for a little more than some of the other ones. Yeah, it's vintage, uh, fourteen ninety nine. Already. Got the outline of Arkansas there. Yeah, that's cool. Home Office. Where's it going, by the way? Is it going to Arkansas? Let's see. Just curious. Yep, it's going to Bentonville. Are you serious? Yep. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that is so cool, huh? Yep. I'm coming home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming home. See, he can sing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can imitate someone singing. <laughs> I can't actually sing, though. All right. All right, we have a uh, fo uh, ca ba 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 football oh. card. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. A football card on U138. Okay, that's the way I think of most of our inventory too. A and bunch Delta. Of, a bunch of blah, blah, blah. blah, blah, blah. One Delta, U-138. Yep. Let's take a look at oh, we got another cartoon right in the box to stay. I've got the freaking song in my head again now. Thanks a lot, Bentonville. Uh, Steve Largent Seahawks. Yeah, $3 on that. Yep. And while you're in there, grab U-162. U162 or U16 also? U162. Oops. That is a KG. Kevin Garnett. Yep. Six dollars. It sure is. Road I was to stay. Alright. Alright, on six Bravo, a cookbook, La Bouche. Six Bravo? Yeah. Hey, Candace, a man's got to make his way. Babouche <laughs> Creole. All right. Uh, wait, it's not tout de sweet? No. That sounds like something you do after you eat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, my God. 
Creole. What am I looking for again? La Bouche Creole. La Bouche Creole. By Leon Sonia Jr. All right. $10 for that. Nice. That's like a little New Orleans scene, I guess. All right, where are we at? Uh, a pop on 10 Charlie, Def Leppard, Vivian Campbell. Vivian Campbell. Is that a dude? No, it's not. It's a girl. No, wait. That is a dude, huh? Well, you can't tell what there's... Are you surprised a guy in the 80s had long hair? Well, when you combine it with the other fact that their name is Vivian... You got a boy named Sue. <sighs> okay. All right. Yeah, that's fine. I'm not judging. I'm just saying. Yeah. Looks more like... Uh... It's really hard to tell if pops or boys are girls. I know. Look. But they always look put, at the, they put the eyelashes on girls. Oh, that's right. You're. Yeah. Oh, you're right. I didn't look for the eyelash. Okay. All right. I didn't know they had a Vivian in the in Def Leppard. Okay. Pocket 59, we sold a baby king cake pendant. 59? Yep. King cake baby, not baby king cake. Yeah, it's a little sterling silver baby. Yep. Solid. Solid silver. Yeah. We oh. sold that for $26.24. Okie doke. And that is everything going out today. All right. Pretty good. Uh, little variety. Pretty good little uh, haul of stuff there to ship out. Let me go ahead and get this packed. What do you want to pack off of this table? If you could choose something to pack. You told me I was packing a cookbook. I know. What would you like to pack there? I already did a pop. I'm not ready for a record. Okay. I agree. I, I was thinking I maybe did do. did a pop and a hat. Maybe we do a record tomorrow if we have right. any. I mean, I know I actually I had, we had an order just come in. Um, yeah, we'll do, we'll do this. No, do a bigger one. Why? No, I want to do this one for a reason. Okay. I have a reason behind it. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm going to pack everything else first, so just in case mail lady gets here early. Okay. Okay, everything fit into one fairly tightly packed Ikea bag. We still have Don's secrets over here. <laughs> All right, Candice, you ready? Oh, yeah. All right. All right, so we have this little cookbook here. Yeah. What you want me to do? I want you to ship it. <laughs> this is not a box. It's a piece of cardboard. Boxes are pieces of cardboard. What kind of box is this? That is a turnaround this way. That is a Gemini Comic Supply comic mailer. Okay. So. Direct me. All right. Fold it up. <laughs> so this part right here. Good Lord. You fold. Like a puzzle. Like, look, it kind of like rotates like this. You understand? Yeah. Go ahead. But then you also have to do this. See what I'm saying? All right. Oh my gosh, I will never get that. Yeah, okay. see? And then you put your thing in there. Do I need to wrap my thing? Yeah, but you have some bubble wrap right over there. <laughs> wrap your thing before you put it in there. Okay. Everything turns into a Three's Company episode. Every time. Just using a little bubble wrap. Don't have to, necessarily have to all the time. But uh, this time, that little cookbook does have the little plastic combs. Yeah, they're already cracking, so definitely want to protect them from cracking even more. Yep. Okay. All right. Put your thing in that thing. Just place it right on top. Oh, it goes up here. Yeah. Okay. And then put your uh, thank you card that you already wrote on top of that. Tuck that in there. Okay. And then you fold these two ends over. Kind of and they have the perforations. Like yeah. Okay. There you go. And then you just put your little piece of tape there. And you see you have another perforation here. You could probably do that. There you go. Put your little piece of tape there. And then you fold the other two sides over. Usually I do the long side, but I, you can do it either way, like I guess. That. Yep, and then tape it up. Usually I'll do a long piece of tape all the way across, wrapping around to the other side too. Like coming around to here? Yeah, something like that. And then I do a, like a piece of tape going the other way also. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it like that, that's one of the little things, just handling tape just takes a little experience, you know? Okay. There's, no, there's no way to get better at that without actually just doing it. 
Okay, and then one mm. across here. Yep, that's it. Okay. All right, that's, that's it. Wait. That's it. You're done. Okay. I'm gonna weigh it out. Point five eight. That's gonna be twelve ounces. Twelve ounces. That's right. Actually making a few little sales this morning. That's good. Good to see. And that is going uh, it's 12 ounces media rate. Do I need to change these dimensions? Nah, don't worry about it. It says 888. They don't they really don't care unless it gets like over 12 inches or something, you know. Okay. And media. yeah. Yep. Ready to roll. Which side? I guess you put it on. I put it on that side just because there's no seam. Right here. It'll sit nice and flat. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Congratulations. You're a level three packer. You now know how. And look, that same method you can use for comic books too. Is that why they're called comic book mailers? Exactly. <laughs> Awesome. exactly and and other stuff too like uh you know any anything flat little, little books like the right. little books and stuff yeah yeah that you don't want to get bent up another thing you could have done with that if we had like a, a piece of uh scrap cardboard or something you could have just wrapped that cardboard around it and then put that in a poly bag yeah that's another method that could be used but that is that is a completely valid method and it's uh I think it's it's well packed, don't you? Oh, like, yeah. look, look how strong it is. Yeah, this is strong. You don't have to worry about those plastic combs you were just talking about, right? Yep. I think, I think we're good to go. Yep. All right, level three done. Can't <laughs> wait for tomorrow. Oh boy. All right, it is just after lunch now. I've gotten my box of vinyl out. I actually have, I think, eleven albums. I tried to do ten, but I think I did one too many. And um, I just airdropped those over to the old computer. Hit cancel. Took 119 total photos for 11 items. So I guess about 10, 10 photos per item per album. I just do front, back. Oh, I can show you. Like in this case here, I do front. You can see me there. I do back. Oh, this one's different because that's a sealed one. So I didn't do as many. Let me try again. Okay, here we go. I do front, back. I try and get a few of the edge. And then I show the uh, sleeve leaning up against the jacket. Then I show a wide view of the record, close view of the label, other side, close view, and then I bag it back up and show them what, how it's gonna come shipped, so. That's what I'm up to. I've got, like I said, 11 records. So, and yeah, the spreadsheet's still a mess. I am going to be able to fill out from here to here on the half hours today. And I think I'm just gonna let those drop the rest of the day. Candace is working over here. So, what do you think? I think it's kind of fun doing something different like that, don't you? Yeah, I like it. I like it too. Cleaning my puffer fish. Oh, yeah, as you do. You gotta keep your puffer fish puffer fish puffer clean. Fish. Puffer fish clean. <laughs> so you're gonna you have three of those, right? Two. Oh, I thought you had three for some reason. Mm -hmm. hey, one of them must have come apart and maybe I saw. Maybe saw so, yeah. yeah. What are those gonna sell for together? Uh, if I remember correctly, they're fifteen each, so maybe like twenty five. Yeah. Twenty five for the pair. Hey, that's good. I'll have to see. I haven't looked at like the condition of the ones that sold. I just glanced while we were in that church sale, you know. Yeah. Fifty cents for uh twenty five is always a good flip for me. Yeah. Alright, I got I've done the records I want to do for today anyway. I did those ones I just showed y'all. And I actually have them scheduled. I have a uh one of them is Tom's Diner, Suzanne Vega, and uh, DNA. 
single 12 inch single and i don't know what i have to draw it y'all know what it is but uh listed that for 60 found an old comp for that there's just not many of those sealed that come up that thing is brand new sealed and uh anyways now i'm starting on some other stuff and this is a camera we paid what we we gave three for this didn't we two or three i bought a wallet for five at that sale and, and then i got this three mm -hmm. huh yeah yep. and look it works works fine it has the charger it has two batteries charging the other one up now and look i found these comps so yeah it's an older camera but look this one sold for 50 now there are some like parts only types here let's kind of disregard those here's another one that comes that's tested and comes with batteries and stuff look here's another one 50 dollars free ship 50 free ship 40 i don't see a charger in that picture anytime you do include a charger you, it needs to be in that main photo so i think i can i think i can uh probably get 50 dollars for this thing especially with the case i think that'll be a pretty quick sale too oh and even have the disc there and the manual all right i wanted to share this with y'all real quick this rain jet complete thing um i didn't really check the comps that well <laughs> i just glanced I try and make real fast decisions um, because that was $27.50. So I did look it up some, but whenever I really got into it, um, this is one that sold, I think, uh, I think it sold on the 10th. So yeah, no, sold over a month ago. Sold in January for $130 for that. They just had a few parts. Look, they just had a few parts here. It sold for 96 free ship. Uh, they're calling th this open box for 170. Here's one um, that sold open box for 125 free ship. So these rainbow, I mean, I know probably most of y'all know that the rainbow stuff is good money, but even like these kind of attachments, because I think these go to like some of the more expensive ones. So this is the listing. I have dropping for tomorrow and luck fortunately the only thing that had been used was this squeegee right here everything else in there was brand new so this is gonna be a nice little return when it sells and I bet it uh, I bet it ends up selling pretty fast so I just found this uh, viewer question um, on our one of our videos and I, it's one of those that I think there's not really a clear-cut answer so I wanted to um, kind of read it and discuss it and see what y'all think it's from aj clemens 8669 what will you do if you ship a new inbox item but they say it didn't work and they want their money back but they won't ship the item back to you and they gave negative feedback what do you mm. think well i, I want to hear what you think but also this is a tough one it is it, like that's why i wanted to include it mm -hmm. not because we know the answer but but because I thought it would be a good one to talk about and to look at what everyone thinks down in the comments below. Um, I guess where I would start, I would call eBay and see if I could get that feedback removed since they're refusing to return the item. Now, I don't know if eBay would do it or not. Besides that, I don't really think you have any recourse except just to respond to the feedback if they don't remove it. What do you think? Hmm. Well, doesn't work and they want their money back, but they won't ship the item back to you. Sounds like a that, scam to me. It, uh, it, it does, but also, it, I mean. If it doesn't work, why wouldn't they send it back? Yeah, I agree. I think they're just trying to get the item in their money. Yeah, but now you're trying to guess motivation. We don't, we can't, you can't guess motivation. No, of course And not. eBay can't guess motivation either. Right. So that's really a non sequitur. It doesn't matter. Right. Like that, like trying to determine intent without having information. Now, as, would, a, as a seller, we don't, it doesn't matter what we think anyway. It matters what eBay thinks. Right. But <laughs> I mean, eBay, now, one thing I will say, eBay, well, does not expect us to give the money back if they don't return the item. So right off the bat, that's that ain't gonna happen. Yeah. If they don't return the item, they don't get the money. 
Yep. So I guess now if they refuse to send the item back, well now they're not getting the money back. Yeah, all you could do is just call. Yeah. That's all you can do. You're not like luckily you're not out the money. Right. Because if they don't open a return, they don't get the money. Yeah. So the only thing we're worried about now is that negative feedback. Yep. I think there's a real good chance it ain't gonna come off though. Because if they it, it depends on what the negative feedback says. If the negative feedback says they sent me a broken item, then that's a true statement. Well, it's allegedly a true statement that you cannot disprove. You can't say, well, that's a false statement. So I, I would I would still try. Yeah, try to get it removed and then just respond to the feedback. Hey, I, I asked the buyer to return it and they refused. Yeah. So that's about all you can do. Yeah. Now, what what if they do? What if they do send it back? What if like uh, these kind of like return scenarios? That's why we always like get so tense and nervous when returns come up. There aren't all like Candace said. There's not always clear cut answers. Like. What if they say, okay, I'll send it back. You get it back. And now this thing that was brand new sealed is open. And at that point, can you only, re you don't have to give all the money back, right? If, if it if it works. And if it was sealed. I, I mean, we don't know if it, well, it says new in box. It doesn't say if it was sealed or Okay, not. let's just assume it was. Yeah. Let's say you can't sell it as new again. Right. Right. So, and let's say it works. Then what? And then what? And then you you refund some of the money back, but not all of it. But then they they complain, yeah. <laughs> right? Like then what happens? I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I mean, I see people all the time saying to re, you know partial refunds, but like what happens when the customer says, "Uh, uh it didn't work for me," you know? They just disagree with you, and then they want all their money back. Then what happens? Ultimately, you you could still eat it. I think you could. So I mean. If they return it, you may end up losing out money, but this way I don't think you will. You just have a negative feedback to deal with. Right. You know? We I mean, hell, we have a negative. Let me let me look at our account real quick. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I hate them. And I every time I get one, I consider whether I should call in or not. Yeah. Hopefully, okay, good. I thought maybe I jinxed myself because I was like, uh, oh no, am I going to pop it this open and find a brand new negative? <laughs> but no. Um We've got one way back here. And inevitably, and we do have three neutrals too. Inevitably, probably bef either before or right after that one falls off, we'll get another one. We yeah. pretty much stay, stay with, with one. We stay with one or two a year. Yeah. Which is, man, that's not many. And probably I would say for every one that we have on our account, we've probably have one removed. Yeah. And we've also had some where we work things out with the buyer later. And you know patch things up or or ask them hey you know I, I feel like that was unfair would you mind removing it or changing it you know i mean we see that happen too but then ultimately sometimes let me see what the negative i got is is it embarrassing <laughs> <laughs> it might be embarrassing let me see oh that oh. we've talked about that yeah we talked we talked about this on video sent me a vintage poster from 1994 in a usps mailer box without a tube smashed we use one of those yeah to ship a poster and i guess it got damaged or what. there's a long story behind that i don't want to get into it it's too painful but yeah that's fine i mean i i could i can stand here and say um i can stand here and say that i didn't deserve it but whatever i'll take it yeah you know? but uh yeah best of luck what do y'all think that uh, he should do with it. I mean, I'll, I think all you can do as laid out is just call eBay and say, Hey, will you remove this? Yeah. Maybe contact eBay for business on Facebook if that doesn't work. Right. And then let it go and just list a bunch of stuff. You know, that's a good thing. The more volume you have, that's one of the good things about having volume is if we do get a negative, it'll get lost in the noise a bit. Right. Whereas if you only have like, let's say you have one feedback a month, if you get one negative feedback, that crushes you. You're gonna be down at like eighty-seven yeah. percent positive feedback, and nobody's gonna buy from you. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. that's why sometimes it's kind of good. Like even if you like selling higher end stuff, if you can find some easy to list and ship, fast moving stuff, sometimes too, to pad your numbers. 
you know, as far as volume goes, that can give you a little bit of safety. That's a good point. Yep. It can also help your metrics, right? Like, mm -hmm. like as far as on time shipments and stuff like that. Occasionally, I will bring a package intentionally a day late to UPS. It's not a big deal. Like a lot of times, like I don't know what my our numbers are, but they're around ninety eight, ninety nine percent. And nobody ever complains because uh -uh. we do one day handling, so you know. But occasionally, that something comes up where we can't make, make it. it to UPS, right? Or maybe the the carrier misses a pickup one day, right? You know, like that would be devastating if that was the only stuff we were shipping that month, right? But you know, there is safety in volume. So, best of luck to you. What do y'all think about that? All right, it's getting near the end of the day now. And uh, Candace actually told me about this phenomena a little while ago. She's about 15 minutes ago. Yeah. yeah. And let me show y'all what it's doing. This is my eBay seller hub. Check it out. Awaiting shipment zero. Zero. <laughs> That's terrifying because we have just before. Oh my gosh, it still says it. We've sold 11 items. There's 11 items waiting to be shipped. Click on that, I'm curious. Well, we've got, this right here says we sold $440 today. I know. So I'm curious if you click <sighs> on it, does it show them? Oh my gosh. It and does. And there they are. <laughs> They're trying to give us a heart attack. Okay, it does. it shows them there. But when I go to overview, now it says it. Now it says 11 items again terrifying y'all golly are, are like what can she ever think you ever think about like what if some like glitch happens and all of our listings disappeared disappeared forever we would be so screwed we would hire some people to come in and help sarah or molly or somebody oh god we yeah. would be so so screwed oh my gosh i don't even want to think about that I would just sell all of our possessions and go live in a tent in the woods <laughs> 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 and grow our own food. <laughs> Your hair is kind of messed up from where you're trying on the oh, hat. Yeah. I just tried on this hat because I'm like, man, this looks little. And I, we came to the conclusion it's a woman's hat because, yeah. I mean, look how, I mean, I don't know, you probably can't tell. No, it is. It's low profile. Yeah. And, and it fits me perfect. So it looks good on you too. <laughs> You, you want to be a model for a listing? So we have our female mannequin head. I get to female use, man. We don't get to use her, her very often. Yeah. That's going to be it for this one, y'all. Thanks a bunch for watching. Hopefully eBay doesn't freak out on us tonight. <laughs> That's terrifying. Oh, we lost 11 orders. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> But Here's the money. You just don't know where to ship them to. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, do have... We had a pretty good listing day today. And we already have seven these seven listings that are going up tomorrow. Because we were talking... We'll talk more about that tomorrow, though. Yeah. Because I want, I want to talk more about the scheduled listing thing. Lonnie has something to say about that. But for today, that's going to be it. Thanks for watching. Bye.